a powerful satanic weapon. It is not pleasant enduring hardship for your faith. Oh, you're one of them. But you can. You will be watching about that decision for you. Whose side are you on? For whom will you stand? God is all powerful. In one sense. When it comes to you, you're not robots. Will you decide to live for him? The little tiny chips and the long, thin flutes. Yeah. The, uh, I think they're all marked. That's one. There's two types of chip. There's percussion, where you actually strike the piece. Yeah. And then there's pressure flaking, where you hold the piece, usually in a leather pad in your hand. Yeah. And you use a, a white tail horn. Now, I've, I've used, I use copper in mine. Mm -hmm. And I, what I do is I take a big axe that I have. Mm -hmm. with a flat back and then a, a smaller hatchet and I keep tapping it and it forms this diamond tip. Okay. Copper is unique that when you hammer it like that it hardens it. Mm -hmm. The more you hammer the, the harder the metal gets. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't wear near as quick as your horn does. Okay. So it, I can go through, well I've made all these pieces and probably a hundred more in the last five years out of this same, the oh, same piece tip. of copper. Nice. Now with white tail you can wear one out in a month's time yeah. if you nap regularly. Oh. Um, there's stretches during the year I'll go four hours a night out chip. Yeah. You know, over a period of a month. <coughs> and then I leave it alone for a while. And it seems like you kind of get too wound up in it and you have to. Well, what's the difference? What's a pressure? Well, a pressure flake is a little finer and it's used for your secondary shaping. But pressure. you still tap it though, right? No, it's just in the hand. Yeah. This. Okay. And all you do, you press like that. Okay. And it takes the flake off the back side. Oh. You have a little <laughs> fractures with mm -hmm. near the flaker. Mm -hmm. That gave you a sharper edge, mm -hmm. and you can control it a little bit better. And that was mm -hmm. for your final shaping and notching. Some of the points have notches in. This mm -hmm. is very good for notching. You need something thin and pointy. Hmm. <coughs> Percussion was probably, you know, 4,000, 6,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. They had the I know what you guys do all the time. <laughs> you eat, you yeah, we do. <laughs> you cook and watch and
Beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to reaffirm the marriage vows of Larry and Shirley Landis. Divine revelation declares that the first marriage was performed in the Garden of Eden. God established marriage and he performed the first ceremony which united our original parents. Let us reverently remember that he has established marriage for the happiness and well-being of mankind. Jesus declared that a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife. By his apostles, <coughs> God has instructed those who enter into this relationship to cherish a mutual love and esteem for one another to bear with each other's infirmities and weaknesses, to comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow, and to provide for each other and for their household, to pray for and encourage each other in the things that which pertain to God, and to live together as heirs of the grace of God. The Son of God, during his earthly ministry, attended a wedding at Cana in Galilee. There he performed his first miracle and brought great happiness to the occasion. At this time, let us pray and ask God's blessing upon this wedding. Great God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the institution of marriage which you have begun so long ago. We pray now for Shirley and Larry. We thank you for their testimony to their original wedding vow 40 years ago. We pray your richest blessing upon them and those that are here standing for them. We thank you again for this time and this service in Jesus' name. Amen.
will of God concerning this holy estate is written in his word. We read in Ecclesiastes 9, live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life. In 1 Corinthians 11, neither is the man without the woman, neither is the woman without the man. As for the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. Listen to the word of the Lord as to his instructions for the husband and the wife. In Ephesians 5.21, he says, Submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and the Savior of the body. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. The one who loves his wife loves himself. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? Larry, will you continue in your commitment to have this woman to be your wedded wife? To live together in holy matrimony. Will you continue to love her, to comfort her, honor her in sickness and in health, and remain faithful to her so long as you shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Curly, will you continue in your commitment to have this man to be your wedded husband? Live together in holy matrimony. Will you continue to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and remain faithful to him as long as you live? If so, answer, I will. I will. We read in sacred scripture that when God made a covenant with Noah, he set a rainbow in the sky as a symbol and said, I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting promise. Thus we learn that it is well when we enter into a solemn agreement with one another to set aside some reminders of what we have promised so that we may look upon it and remember. What symbols do you present in your marriage covenant? These are your original wedding rings. And as you have selected these original wedding rings as a symbol of your marriage covenant, they are fitting and they speak of your commitment to continue with one another. The precious metal, gold, uniting you as husband and wife. The ring, you'll notice, is endless. A symbol of the union of your hands and your heart, which must continue until broken only by death. Let these symbols be unto you a constant reminder of your promises to each other and a silent incentive to their fulfillment. I 
Hi, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Make me Larry. Make me Larry. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. We <laughs> must stay forward. We must stay forward. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poorer. For poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For death do us part. For death do us part. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. And give it. And give it. As a promise. As a promise. Showing my constant. Showing my constant. And everlasting love. And everlasting love. As you have openly declared your wish to be reunited in marriage. And as you have made these solemn promises before God and these witnesses, and confirm the same by the giving and receiving of vows from one another, I, Parson James Burrow, Minister of the Gospel, authorized by God and the State of Pennsylvania, so to do on this 26th day of September, in the year of our Lord, 1993, we will hereby pronounce you a husband and wife. What therefore God hath joined together, says Matthew, let not man put asunder. So we pray. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Larry, you may kiss your wife. No, you may kiss your husband. <laughs> Now oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. <laughs>